first of all, I would like to say thank you to everyone uh, for giving these students an opportunity. They are truly amazing. We've been working together since uh, January, and none of them are currently my students. So these are all students from 10th and 11th and 12th grade who have a great interest in their education, and they have some ideas that they'd like to share with you. So I think I'll turn it over to you now. Would you, would you like them to introduce themselves Can they all first? introduce themselves? Absolutely. All right, so why don't we go around and, well, uh, Jonah, do you want to start? And we'll just kind of swirl around. And... I'm Jonah. Um, I'm in 11th grade. I'm Miles Berry. I'm in 11th grade. I'm Imani Coleman, I'm in the 12th grade, and I also attend the Carthage High School. Yeah. I'm Anna Santafara, I'm in 12th grade, I also attend the Carthage High School. I'm Jordan Goss, I'm in 11th grade, and I go right to Carthage High School. I'm Amani Calamore, I'm in 10th grade, and I also go to Arcadia High School. I'm Nathaniel Rodriguez, and I'm also in 10th grade, and I go to Arcadia High School. I'm Essence Collins, I'm in 10th grade, and I also attend students are the students who are putting together the proposal and then Janaya has been working in our journalism class and she has been reporting everything that has been going on with the students. Why don't I say a little bit about how we got to this point. Uh, the group was nice enough to invite me, oh uh, gosh, what about a month ago, a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. to discuss the possibility of, of a new course and they were wonderful because when I explained them the process and that we have to wait until um, you have to get it in the fall the, the previous the prior year to when the course is going to be offered they were great um, but they kept pushing me and it was really wonderful they said well you know this probably can't happen for next year but maybe the year after so when we talked about it a bit and we talked about what they were looking to do basically miss brothers and i felt that we could provide them with a rigorous course within the, our existing english 12 program that gave them not only the graduation requirement but the material that they were so looking to have included in the student voice that they have in this is really gonna be inspiring. So that's why I brought it to cabinet. I thought it'd be great for you all to see there. It's, it's what we work for and what we miss sometimes up here that we don't get to see the student voice and, and the energy and the work that they put into things that are totally outside of the regular course requirement and the fact that you and Miss Brothers, they found her. So I teased Miss Brothers once and said, you know what, you and I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, but I think this course would still move forward. <laughs> so, because <laughs> they're that determined to make this happen. So here they are today to present to you some of the wonderful things that they've been working on. Go ahead, bud. take it away. Okay, so the reason that we got together was for an African-American region that Miss Brothers was appointed to host. And basically the African-American region is when you bring you know, the form of poetry or a book um, written by an African-American author, and they would talk about what it is and what it means to them. We had such a great turnout and such a good feeling, like a good vibe in the, in the room when we were all together, that we decided that we should definitely try to recreate this for an everyday, like, basis. Um, we had original works and, like, original poetry and different things that happened in different performances, so we were like, we should try and make this Class. Well, we, we first talked about making this an uh, African American literature class, so an uh, English class collective. So at first we saw that and we knew that it would take two years, so that couldn't happen. But then we realized that we had a multicultural studies class that was previously offered here, multicultural lit, I believe it was called. So we started coming up with all these ideas on what we would like the class to be like. So uh, we started out having meetings where we just would brainstorm what we want in the class as far as criteria, what we want the name of the class to be, and uh, all the different cultures we want represented, like European studies, Asian studies, religion, um, and then the basic English studies. So we expanded upon our ideas from there, thus we formed what we would like it to be like. So a lecture style class with 
project-based focus. We wanted it to be in the community also. So here are our ideas. Um, next year for the future, we basically want it to be a class where it is So we want it to be a volunteer-based class. We want it to be always in school projects. We want to hear about multicultural class all the time, as in we're doing this performance, or we're doing this next, or we're having a seminar, something like that extent. And we want to demonstrate our learning through lectures. So seminars, talking about current events, current issues, and also focusing on some studies, or as in literature that influenced thus events. So here we are to Mosaic. Mosaic, multi-omnipotent students assimilating and integrating culture. Okay, so Mosaic was created um, based off of the fact that we all feel like we need to spread awareness throughout our community. The lack of not knowing is pretty great in many of the students, high school students, and we feel like with this class, we could provide many different experiences with all kinds of people and all kinds of cultures, and you can learn about these different things and know once you leave high school that what you know from Arcadia High School is going to be different in the real world. You're going to meet all kinds of people, and you're not going to be coming into the real world ignorant to other cultures. So, what we would like to for it to be is focusing on most many arts also, so literature arts and music art. Also, some some of us in here are actual artists, so we'd like to be able to show that off. The course will be a, should, could either be an English class or a history class, because it can be multicultural history, or it can be an elective. It, can, it should be a year-long class, but we would like to almost modify 12th grade English. So that way we don't have to push it through the course catalog in October. <laughs> um, it provides community service hours as well for the 12th graders. Um, the community service hours are like the community service, not hours, the um, opportunities that will be presented will be, you know, optional. Like, okay, you can do this if you'd like to, you know, it's, but you should because you need to graduate. Studies will include a seminar with discussions of our instructor, possibly, miss, most likely to be Mr. Brothers. Um, and a one-page response is should be often at the end of the week discussing or wrapping up what we've done. Uh, our, our focuses in multicultural studies include the following. Um, I'd like to put an emphasis on the sexuality, gender, and religion part. Even though that's not a necessarily common culture we would think about, it's a subculture in these cultures. So it relates to all of the following above. For the African American group, um, the students would basically survey any time period um, that you know was impactful for uh, African American people. Not just like, you know, because sometimes in English classes we focus on mainly slavery or mainly the civil rights movement. They could talk about post-civil rights movement or things that are now a current struggle for African-American teenagers, young people, um, older people, all kinds of things. The, at the end of every unit, we'd be doing an end of unit project based off of what they might have been learning. So for this one, it would be a PowerPoint presentation based off of a novel written by an African-American or about an African-American For Hispanic culture, we know that a lot of Hispanic culture is through music and poetry, so we would like to put an emphasis on that, but you can also research other things that Hispanic culture has done. Um, at the end of the unit, we would like to do probably a, a spoken word, almost, uh, relating to music or Hispanic culture in general. The Native American course would basically be observing their traditions and the things that they might have done besides what you might normally learn in U.S. history, you know, how they moved around the fact that they might have been nomadic and things like that. Besides just 
the basics about it and go in depth with their culture and their rituals and their religion. Um, their interviewed project, interviewed project would be basically bringing in artwork and talking about quickly what it means to them specifically because a lot of Native American artwork, you know, kind of goes unrecognized. So for the Asian literature, we were planning on having students read books that would refer to Asian past. I have copies and prints of recommended books. Um, they will pass to the hand. You can see they're, um, it's Asian and it's including Korean, Japanese, and Chinese. A book that I found, uh, Journey to Topaz, is about a girl who struggles through um, life as um, after the Pearl Harbor effect. So these books are rec um, these books are recommended by other teachers and also districts that feel that these books um, could be a good influence and also impact students. How often do you read a book about Asian about people? You know, so um, then if your project would be bringing in an Asian dish or possibly writing off the history behind their food, because we all know that, you know, Vietnamese people have different ways of self-cleansing through their food, and we can get to know that. European history, history will look at politics. Much of the politics influences their languages also. So for the end of the unit project for uh, European history will be choosing a country and presenting what's the politics there or how, to, how is it impactful on the world. For religion, gender, and sexuality, we will mostly include women's gender, LGBTQ, and religion studies. We want to include misogyny in society and how that correlates with ethnicity and the races. We want to talk about religion and where that stems from the original Anglo-Saxon ideal religions and where the oppression and discrimination stems from all the other religions. Because when you talk about learning about different cultures, and religions, you have to understand where the oppression comes from. So we'll learn a little bit about Islamophobia, and we'll want to learn about anti-Semitism and stuff like that. And we'll just want to include some of that in the curriculum. We also would like to discuss like the positive effects of religion also. So we'll be doing a project where you, like based on charity, so you choose an organization and you're going to present something that will raise money for it and thus will donate to that organization. So it can be a church, it can be uh, the Trevor Project, or it can be Women's Battered House, just to name a few. And we also want to talk about the positive impacts that women have had on society also. So uh, our, the YMCA has reached out to me about volunteering and partaking through the YMCA to get these volunteering hours. So uh, YMCA would like to discuss how this course can affect their global agenda. So. They've talked to me about possibly sending me to a country for free, Senegal, to represent Rochester. And they're expanding their Global Excellence Center to the nearest YMCA near us. Also, the Multicultural Studies provides possible scholarship opportunities, so such as the YMCA, Ronald McDonald House, and Urban League would also provide such opportunities to multicultural. To be, uh, uh, we want this to also be considered, we want it to be a public face, so you know, you might hear us in our local, in our school's newspaper, or hear us through the announcement. We want it to be very public, so a positive public force in Greece that's helping us. So field trips and thus participation and volunteering would help that. As I I'm really big on the the in our part of like the general person's life. Um I do music myself. I love performance art. Um I think it's very important because I believe everybody is an artist in something. Either you can act or you can sing or you can literally draw or paint. You know, you know, there's a lot of different things that you could you could do with this. I want I wanted it to be part of this class. Um, I, th I feel it would be interesting for a lot of for students if they could do something like that. Um, with the projects at the end of the units, I feel we should do like a small performance with each class for them to present 
not just random things, but, you know, right on their heart. A lot of kids, they have experiences, a lot of things that they've been through in life, and that'll bring bring out their art a lot. Um, and they can use what they've learned. I think, I think it'll be it'll be really interesting if you know if they did that. There's not really any classes that are like, okay, you learned history, you're gonna learn this, and now you can write something, do something, perform something that's already written, and put what you've learned into the class into it. So, um, big, big, big on arts. As a believer, everybody, I feel I feel it's important for people to speak up. You know. Every student has a voice, and I believe we can be history makers, game changers. We can do a lot of different things with this. Um, I guess I'm big on the arts. So. Um, to elaborate on like community service and volunteering, um, as like uh, as we're learning about the community, we can also give back to the community. And so this way, while we're learning, like say we see, you know, we learn about homeless people, we, we can give opportunities to students to volunteer to help the fellow man that just needs help. This way, you know, we can, and this could also help get students that require graduation because a lot of kids, you know, they don't go after themselves volunteering. Like I myself, it's, I'm still doing graduate or volunteering because I didn't go for it. Like we could give kids the opportunity, like, hey, you know, I'm here, here's an opportunity to volunteer. If you need it, you should go for it. And they don't have to do it. So it's not like it'll affect them negatively if they don't do it. But it would help them benefit. It would help benefit them as a human and as a student if they would do it, because it will show them like the reality of human life. And there are also many projects that we have already been looking into, and Emily will talk about that. Um. Okay. So I go to church, and um, there's a lot of opportunities that they provide at church for people to donate and help other people from other countries. And so I went to one of their conferences and I heard about this project called um, the Ugandan Water Project. And they are really cool and they started in 2007. And um, what not a lot of people know is that in Africa, there's a lot of places where the animals, the people, they fight over the water in like a tiny little pond. And it's usually very unclean. And apparently uh, dirty water kills more people than war. Um, dirty water kills more women than breast cancer and AIDS combined and that is a really big problem and I was thinking that this is a really good project to support also they have really cool projects because they travel around the world and they also build water tanks around the world and they collect things that they can um, use for fundraising like Latino beads which are really beautiful paper beads and they are very easy to sell because a lot of people you know, they like the look of them. And um, there's also other projects, like at my church I heard about another project. It's a, um, they help rehabilitate people who um, come from jail and they don't know how to get back into society. So like we can get our parents involved too and it doesn't have to be just a kid thing. We can like strengthen the community and help them out. And we can, you know, it's like giving people a second chance and I think that's really good too. That also has to be a part of this course because along with your culture, people have a lot of grudges because of what their culture has done and they get a lot of hate for no reason and they carry things on their shoulders that they shouldn't. So I think we also have to incorporate giving people second chances and really understanding people. Uh, just a moment to look at all the people that were involved. There's also many more that want to join up to this class. So. Uh, please consider our class for to putting back into the group. Any questions? Can you, you can I just ask a question? Can you talk about the process that you guys like? How did you get the idea? What was what's behind this? Tell us a little more about that. So it started out as the African American read-in, where we had a huge turnout. A whole bunch of people joined up. There was over fifteen performances. And we thought that it was just gonna be small and almost like no one was gonna notice it, maybe a few people were gonna come through, but a whole, a lot of people came up. We had over 28 students come up to the African American region. From there we're like, how do we recreate this? How do we recreate this joining of the school? Because a lot of us didn't see the school coming together like that by themselves. So 
when we thought of this, we thought, how can we include more people that showed up? Because most of the people that showed up were minorities. So from there, we came up with multicultural literature or mosaic. From there, we were like, well, what do we want in the class? We want uh, discussing current topics. We want to be socially aware. We want to create more people that want to give back to the community, but also know what their community, what their community is. The, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, the process of creating the name. A lot of we noticed a lot of times because obviously you know we're going through the Phoenix District office. Everyone in our school like knows what's going on. So a lot of them. A lot of people were like, oh, okay, like it's the class for the black people. We're like, no, it's not the class for the black people at all. So we ended up changing the name. We were like, okay, actually, it's not an African American studies course, or uh, it doesn't have multicultural studies right there in your name. Like it's mosaic. Oh, what is that? Then people become more curious and they want to know what does everything stand for. Um, the whole idea of the reason why we came up with the idea of it being a lecture and a seminar was based off the fact that we all know, we, you know, a lot of us are seniors and juniors, and so we've been at, uh, in high school for so long. We know what every classroom setting is like, and we know we realized that we all like discussions and having to do an assignment. You know, once the discussion is over or whatever, you know, on their own, like obviously for homework. Um, and we decided that that was a good idea, and that's what people would want to do, as well as giving them that academic, rigorous, you know, effect that they need. Um, definitely more than just a class, we wanted this to be something that affected, like even saying the community, not just the school. And with the class, with along with the arts, we wanted the kids to be involved, like she was saying. It's, it's more interesting when you can communicate and kind of be on the same level with your teacher and kind of go back and forth instead of sitting in a room and listening to one person talk the whole period, you know. Um, I'm not, honestly, I, my history classes are my worst because I sit there and I listen. Not that history wasn't, you know, interesting to me, but it's just, it was the same thing constantly and there was no, like, interaction. Of course, every teacher is different, but the ones that I had were just basically here, you know, I'm going to let you know about what this is, I want you to go read your textbooks, and that's the, and here's the homework, and that was it. But with this class, it's all that plus more you're basically getting more into depth, like they were saying, and the kids are allowed, the students are allowed to interact along with not just them, but with the community. We talked about having something big maybe at the end of every month or every other month, like a performance within Greece, within small areas, like um, maybe, you know, yeah, coffee shop or, you know, a team club or maybe even a public park, just to do something and get it out, you know put out like flyers or something, let, let people know in the community, hey, we're gonna be here at this time. If you wanna come, come, it'll be interesting. And everything that we've learned in school, like I said, the art, there'll, there'll be skits, you know, performances, there'll be, you know, individual singers, bands. I think there should be artwork. People should show up what they've painted or paint in front of somebody, like in front of the crowd if they can. It, it'll just be interesting. So many of us don't know what's going on. We just know, uh, gas prices are rising, why is that, and blame it on something. So we're more, <laughs> we teach in the sense that we we know that what our current affairs are, and we express that through the artists. Mm -hmm. Me, I just, I'm sorry. Well, number one, I just wanted to say, first of all, I'm so impressed, um, but the idea behind the course to me, in terms of making people or helping your peers be ready for the world um, is huge. Um, and, and I would love to see that back way up even to the younger grades, some sort of a course similar to what you're designing. I love the service component. Um, and I think what I like about that is that I see kids, and I have two teenagers, who are completing service, but they're sort of doing it as part of like a requirement. And it's kind of random. Where I think when you think about our world, what's gonna bring about change is when, when people are passionate about what they're serving. And it sounds like the content of the course would allow kids to identify different causes and things that they're passionate about and then link that work to it, which to me would be super powerful and, um, and would help us greatly as a community. So great thinking. I just 
I just love the idea that you're so engaged in your own learning mm -hmm. that you want to, to have, create a curriculum that allows you to express yourself and to go deeper into issues as a group, as a community, so that you're exploring all your, your learning as you're going through it. For you to be able to think about a curriculum, think about a curriculum that you're not learning right now. Nobody's presenting a curriculum to you that is hitting on all the things that you personally are discovering as learners, that you're seeing in your community. For you to come up with a curriculum that's powerful and it goes bigger than you, create a legacy. And it's really, really powerful. So thank you so much for coming up and sharing and being brave and pushing yourselves. And it's really impressive. I, I'm new to your district. I've only been here um, about a month and a half and taking um, position of Mr. Nelms had, so those are pretty big shoes to fill. But I have to tell you, this is probably the most impressive presentation I have seen in years. Not just in, in Greece, but in years. This is student voice stepping forward saying, we want to make our English 12 course relevant to us as we prepare for the future. And you have hit on so many aspects of what's important to young people that, you know, we take for granted. So we say, we're gonna create English 12. No, you're saying, time out, we're gonna create English, English 12, because this is what is important to young people today. And, I, you know, my hat off to you, this is impressive. And to your superintendent who encourages the voice from every aspect of this district. You know, many times as leaders in, in schools, we want student, or we want teacher voice, we want union voice, we want administrative voice, and whoops, oh, the student voice, which is almost the most important voice. And thank you for sharing this with us. I'm thank so impressed. Thank you. Thank you. There, there's one voice you haven't shared with us, but I thought this was the best part, because you can tell they've got it well planned out. Right. So why don't you all give us a little background on the type of personality you feel needs to lead this course mm -hmm. as the teacher, because they've got that all worked out. Oh, man. This one. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a teacher that is comfortable with talking about certain topics. So obviously it's a topic about culture and things like race and religion and sexuality are going to come up. So it's important to have a teacher that's comfortable with talking about those things and you know, also things get a little feisty, they can like calm things down. Um, exactly, exactly. But be able to push people, but at the same time, not so far that things get crazy, but at the same time, they're like willing to, you know, simmer things down if it does get that way. And also someone that's gonna push you to think outside the box, not just what you see, this is what's happening, this, you know, why, why is this happening? How does it affect you? What are you going to do to fix it? I would also like to say, like, we would need a teacher that it can respect other people's opinions and, like, can won't, like, force their opinion on children, and, like, so kids can think that, oh, he's not going to judge me by the way I think. Like, he'll have an unbiased opinion. Like, they can't just, like, oh, I don't agree with you, you know, I'm going to fail you, sort of agree. <laughs> a teacher who's not going to let their opinions get in the way of yeah. their teacher. I like to add, I like to have a teacher that's open-minded, who's mm -hmm. not afraid to open their mind to other students' views, you know, because teachers who are close-minded seem, sometimes they seem a little bit ignorant and arrogant because they don't understand how a student feels, so a student can be affected that way. Um, I once had a teacher, I explained to her why I feel I don't think a certain person in a book was a hero, I feel that it was a villain. And um, she didn't believe me. And she thought that the person should be a hero because of what they've done. But I felt a total different thing. So an open-minded teacher to me is a teacher that I feel that can work with this course. It's almost like you need a pledge that anybody who enters the class okay. has to sign a pledge that with open-minded listeners, engaged research, that is rigor, it's almost like a pledge of how when you come in the door to where your heart has to be to do the work. That was like the whole point of the class was trying to bring everybody together and, and make them feel comfortable to share their opinions. Mm -hmm. Like, because like nowadays, you know, you walk down the street, everyone has their headphones in looking down. No one's really a community anymore. We're just mm -hmm. people that walk near each other. Like, 
so many friends become strangers, you know, the community starting to dissolve and we sort of need to bring it back. And I mean, you take your headphones out for class anyway, you might as well take your headphones out to hear something important. At the end of the day, we, we want people to at least think about something. You don't have to say, I completely agree with you, but you can at least say, okay, maybe this person could be right, or maybe this person doesn't have the same opinion as me, but, you know, I see where they're coming from. And also, I think it's a good opportunity for people, because I know one of my classes now, like, you usually don't associate with people, like, outside of, like, your group or your thing, but I have, um, I was in a human relations class, and there was, like, a whole bunch of different types of people, and in the class, like, at the end of the day, everyone talks, like, to each other, and it's very open. And you don't get a lot of classes where everyone is friends with everyone in a big class. So I think that's another reason why you get to associate with cultures outside of your own and you are more open to everyone else's thoughts and like observations. Cool. And it's like, yeah, cool, it's just constant. Um, and also to, in addition to, you know, obviously, yes, we do have a class that provides, you know, that uh, comfortable, you know, vibe around in the classroom, but you don't have to take human relationship relations as a, it's not a requirement. You don't have to take it to graduate. I mean, it's, you know, encouraged you should take it, but you don't have to. You have to take English for four years. So, yeah, four years. So if you're gonna take it, you might as well have and this all, kind of uh, And also, like, it's like how she said, it's optional. You know, some kids have full schedules that they wanna do something and it gets left out. So they never get the chance to fully, you know, like, I wanna do this, but I want AP Calc or I want criminal law of justice, like they want other classes more, and then they miss out on the opportunity to really open up and express their feelings. And this way it's sort of like, they're not forced to, but they're sort of pushed to talk about it if it is in the English ball that they have to take. Next good question, how would you feel about continuing to work on um, the curriculum? I think it's wonderful that you've thought through some of your reading, some of your texts, but the design of curriculum lets you look at lots of possibilities and discuss it as a team and really kind of create something that would make sense to you. How would you feel about working and having some time um, between now and the summer to actually work on this more and flesh this out if we could find a way for you to do that? And what materials might you need? I would ask you to think about, you know, do you need digital media? Do you need access to um, other ways to get your message out. What do you need from people in the community? The more we can have you get the time and space to continue with your design, I think would be very, very helpful. So if there's an interest in that, um, do some thinking. Think, you know, get, get, I encourage you to, to reach for the stars. Just think big um, and tell us what you need. And that was our, uh, one of our big goals was not just to have it at Arcadia. We want to try to have it everywhere. Like a, National uh, required district just wide requirement. Go bigger, go home. Nationals go. Internet. Hey. I forgot to mention. We've talked about this before. Also with the class, not just people within the class and the community, but I think that also during the year they should have people that come from other areas to come to the class and present themselves, their art, you know, their lifestyle. A lot of people, you know. Art, a lot of people think of art as the literal drawing and painting and then the music. There's a lot more art. To have somebody come in and talk about their life and if that if their experience changes so you know someone else's life or touches them, that's that's art. That's what art does. So I would love to have people to come into the class and present themselves also. And it, I mean like we were saying, we want this class to kind of unite people and it's not like the district hasn't tried that. I mean we have sports, we have music, that you know, after you know, extracurricular activities that people participate. But I'm in both sports and music, and even in there, there's separate groups of people. Um, I feel that this class might help a whole lot more with that because it's everybody who's getting to you know, it's an experience. It's everybody's getting to present themselves, put themselves out there in the class. Within the class, I would hope that you know, the teacher, like they were saying, we want a teacher who can do that also, be kind of part of the students, not higher or above them, which in a sense, they are the teachers, so they are teaching us, but they should interact with the students also. This is an amazing, amazing group of kids. 
I am confident that you all will change the world and change Greece for the better. Because I mean, the, it's hard to believe you're 16, 17, 18 years old standing here saying all this. So I want to thank you for inviting me into the experience and great things to come. And it sounds like we have a lot of work to do. And we're going to get you to that coffee house and maybe we'll start our first planning session there. Miss Brothers and I already staked it out for you. <laughs> all right? So thank you all. You're, you're amazing. You're, you're very, very, very